Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to talk about white paint and whether or not you should use it in your watercolor paintings. This is a controversial subject, but hopefully today we'll break it down a little bit and you can decide for yourself whether it is right for your art. So the types of water, white watercolor you're going to have now, this is a tube of white oil paint. I just wanted to have a big tube of white paint to show you. My tiny little tubes of white watercolor really wouldn't do the trick. Um, there's a couple different types of white and there's a couple different ways you can use it effectively and with intent in your work, but there's an equally strong reason why you should avoid it. We're going to talk about both of those today and then you can let me know in the comments below what you think and whether or not you use white in your watercolor. So let's talk about the different types of white watercolor paint there is. The most popular white paint you're going to see in a watercolor set is Chinese white. Now typically that is made from pigment white 4 or PW4. That is a fairly neutral white. It's quite translucent so when you mix it with a color it's not going to make it like opaque like a gouache and um, it's made from zinc oxide. You probably remember um, if you were a teenager in the 80s or 90s putting zinc on your nose so you wouldn't get sunburned. It's the same idea. It's a, this, uh, this zinc oxide white and um, that is used more um, to mix in with other colors to give them um, a little bit of body, not really make them super opaque, but make them granulating and a little easier con to control. So for instance, say you're painting a big sky and um, you want to have a variety of different colors in there because you're doing maybe like that time at sunrise or at sunset where you have pinks and you have blues and you have yellows and you have purples um, and you want to be able to lift out some clouds. If you just went in with those transparent colors, you're probably going to end up with the sky that's a little brighter than you want and if you try to go lift anything it's not going to lift because those are staining colors. If you add white pigment white 4 to your mix it's going to make those colors granulate a little bit so you're going to get a beautiful texture to your sky and if you do want to lift out some colors it's going to allow that because white being an opaque color white will actually rather than sinking into the fibers of your paper it will float on top in your wash and it will help things granulate and give you a beautiful texture either a um, a kind Kind of scaly texture or a just kind of a speckly texture kind of like you get when you use ultramarine blue which is an opaque or not really totally opaque but it's a granulating color so what you notice when you're painting with watercolors is that some colors are staining and other colors are more granulating or more opaque so staining colors have teeny tiny little pigment particles that can um kind of absorb and bind into the paper, making it very difficult to lift them back up. So that's great when you want to do lots of layers and glazes. You don't want those lower colors to lift up. You want to put film upon film of paint and you want the light to be able to travel through those films of paint and then bounce off the paper and come back and give you a beautifully vibrant, um, luminous color. Sometimes though, you're painting something with more body and volume and you want to kind of diffuse that light a little bit. And that's when your granulating um, or semi-opaque colors come in. So like if you're using ultramarine blue for your sky and you've painted a nice wash of ultramarine blue and you take your paper towel and you blot it to lift up some clouds, they lift up really easily. That's because the pigments in the ultramarine are, they're bigger, they're chunkier, and they're floating on top of the um, water in your paint and they're not sinking down into the fibers of the paper itself. So kind of controlling when you're using um, a semi-opaque color and a completely transparent color is a great way to expand what your paints will do. So let's say you're painting a row of colorful glass bottles on a windowsill. Would you want to use white in this instance? You wouldn't want to mix white in your paint because you would want to glaze on layer upon layer of transparent colors so you render these very transparent objects um, as realistically as you can or as and you even if you're not painting realistically you would get that feeling of that bright transparent glass. Um, would you want to put a little white highlight on it with white paint? You probably would be better off to actually mask your paper before you begin with like a little li liquid mask or liquid uh, masking fluid or frisket so that you could peel it off and have that vibrancy of the white of the paper. So that's an instance where I would say you're better off not to use white. However, if you are painting a, um, uh, say a boat out at sea and you've got kind of a misty day, um, your sky, you might want to add some white pigment into your washes so you can get kind of a gray granular sky so it feels like you're in this misty area and the billows of your, um, of your big ship, you probably want to have some white in the mix so you give volume because white can give volume to your, uh, to your subjects. Whether you, John Sigur Sargent used it very effectively in, um, in people's clothing. Uh, and if a master like that can use it, why not you? You can't say that it's not worth using or that a real artist doesn't use white when 
we have we have stood on the shoulders of the masters that have used white. So another white I want to talk about is pigment white six, which is titanium white. Now a titanium white watercolor is going to be more uh, opaque than a Chinese white watercolor, but you have to be careful because sometimes they will label a paint as Chinese white, but it's actually made with pigment white six. And the reason you might want to be aware of this is because Chinese white is a very neutral translucent white. Titanium white is a, a more opaque, cooler white. Um, so if you're trying to do a warm highlight on something, you're going to notice it's very blue and it doesn't quite match other things you're using. So you definitely will need to mix it into some other colors, like some yellow ochre or some other warm color you've used in order to make it kind of match your painting, or it's just going to stick out kind of like a sore thumb. So that's why it's important to know what pigments are in your paint. Now there's also a, a white called buff titanium, which is a kind of an off-white titanium white, which would have a warmer effect if using that as a highlight. Um, I personally don't have that color in my palette, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't. You have to do what's right for you in the subject that you're painting. Now there's a couple other white pigments that you might come across. One is eggshell white, where they actually grind up eggshells, and they use that for a white paint, and you see that a lot in the handmade watercolors that are very popular, the, the kind of small batch artisanal paint companies that are coming out with watercolor. I've never used that myself, um, so I can't tell you how, how it is to work with, but I imagine it's going to be a little granular since it is kind of like an eggshell, like a mineral, um, and it would give you a very, uh, I think, a textural white, but I'm not sure because I haven't used it myself, but that's an option. There's also um, an extender that is a pigment white 5, which is called lithophone, and the thing is when pigment white 4, which is your slightly translucent uh, zinc white or Chinese white, or pigment white 5, or pigment white 18, which is a chalk, if that's used in your paint, paint companies don't have to disclose it if it's used as an extender. So that's, I think, the issue where sometimes you end up getting a student grade paint that's got extenders in it, it's opaque and muddy, and you don't exactly understand what's going on because you're trying to follow a tutorial and you're using phthalo blue, just like I'm using phthalo blue, but you're getting this murky mud instead of a vibrant transparent color. And that's probably because they used either pigment white 4 or pigment white 5 as an extender and didn't disclose it on their label. Now, a titanium white White gouache is another white I want to talk about, and this is excellent for doing highlights, especially if you like to do illustrations, like um, like children's book illustrations or food illustrations or um, anything where you want that kind of like sparkly illustrative look. Maybe you want the look more of a gouache or an acrylic painting. That is a great white for highlights. Um, I like Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martin, but pretty much any white gouache is going to be a titanium white, super opaque gouache color, and that's going to be more opaque than a titanium white watercolor. So if you have a titanium white gouache, it's more opaque, um, has more body than a titanium white watercolor. You definitely want to use a titanium white um, or pigment white six based white if you are using it for highlights or you're applying it thickly, because Chinese white if it's made from pigment white 4, is um, a little brittle, so if you painted the thicker passage of that, it could crack over time, flake off your painting, and just really not give you a nice look. That's why pigment white 4 usually isn't used in other um, other mediums such as oils or acrylics because it is has such a low tinting strength and also it has the um, uh, the quality of becoming brittle. So uh, to wrap this up, it's up to you whether you want to use white or not. I would strongly suggest if you're a beginner to start off with a split primary palette that are just your basic colors, a warm and a cool version of red, yellow, and blue, and mix from that because you're going to learn a lot about color theory and um, white can get a little muddy and opaque and it can um, it can make it difficult to get the look that you want in watercolor. Uh, and if you are going to use watercolor, white in your watercolor painting to mix or for highlights, it's really important that you use that on colors or washes that you're not going to glaze on top of for two reasons. If I do a... Um, uh, if I mix white into my paint to do a sky or to do um, some clothing and then I try to, to paint over it, to paint shadows or to paint something on top of it, what's going to happen is two things. That glaze I put on top is going to kind of mix in with what I have underneath because the white pigment is not going to seep into the fibers of my paper and lock down. It's going to stay always reactive, you know, reactivatable. So I'm either going to end up lifting up that wash that's underneath and getting a streaky mess or I'm going to end up with just a kind of a muddy um, opaque glaze. It's not going to really look very well. It's going to be a little streaky and not look that great. So you want to make sure if you're mixing white and that's your top layer or it's the only layer that you're going to do. Um, 
And if you're using like titanium white for a highlight, you want to make sure that's your last layer um, because it is going to cover up a lot of what you have underneath. It may cover up completely in the case of using a titanium white gouache. Like that's great for a highlight on a dew drop or um, sparkle in an eye that you didn't reserve. Perfect for that. But if you go and you paint that on top of something, it's going to wipe away all the layers that you've done previously. Um, and if you try to layer on top of that, you're going to end up with this kind of opaque sludgy color. So uh, just kind of keep those in mind and experiment and see what's best for you. But if you are a beginner, I would hold off adding white to your palette until you've seen what your pure colors can do on their own. So what do you think? Do you use white in your watercolor? And if so, how do you use it? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I don't really want anybody to bash anybody for using white or for not using white. That's not the intent of this video. I think that there are no bad colors. There is a reason to use any color in your palette or to avoid using any color in your palette because you're trying to express your feelings, your perspective of the world, and your ideas on paper. And how you choose to do that is up to you. You are in control of what goes on that paper. You are the artist. So let me know if you use white or not in the comments below and let me know if you learned a thing or two from this video. I hope you did. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Until next time, happy crafting!